Unsere Welt von heute. Our world today is increasingly networked, from personal devices in everyday life all the way to complex industrial systems. The resulting data must be processed, understood, and used intelligently. For this, Siemens offers MindSphere, our cloud-based ecosystem. Let's say you're a machine builder operating internationally. You need to monitor and analyze the functions of machines operating at various locations around the globe and be able to identify optimization potential. The physical locations of the machines, whether it's the U.S. or South Africa, should be irrelevant to you. In our video today, we want to demonstrate concretely how you can securely and easily connect your machines and devices worldwide with MindSphere. For this, there are four different options. The first option establishes a connection via integrated MindConnect function blocks. These are integrated quickly and easily into the Siemens S7-1500 controller via the TIA portal. We'll illustrate this type of connection in more detail later in the video. The second option is connectivity via so-called MindConnect gateways. One is the MindConnect NanoBox, shown here. The other is the MindConnect IoT2040. Using the integrated connectivity, you can extract data from the field level via an S7 connection or OPCUA and transfer it to MindSphere. The third option is a connection of open gateways via the MindConnect lib. The MindConnect lib is a C-based library which can be integrated on open gateways such as Somatic IoT 2040. You benefit from maximum flexibility and a variety of additional options. The fourth connection option entails software, which is installed on Somatic IPCs. This software offers the same functionalities as our MindConnect gateways, but with the additional advantage that entire Somatic SCADA systems can be connected to MindSphere. Steffen, can you tell us about the necessary steps for connecting an S7-1500 controller to MindSphere? The first thing we have to do to connect an S7-1500 controller to MindSphere is to create an asset. Once that is done, we can then configure the function blocks in a TIA portal. Let's start with the asset. What you are looking at right now is the MindSphere user interface. We need to open the IoT data modeler to create a new asset for the function blocks. For the purposes of this demonstration, we created the area Automation Tasks ahead of time. This is where we will create our asset. Down here at the bottom, I click on New Asset, and then we have to configure a few parameters right here. Uh, we mustn't forget to specify the country. Here we see that the asset was created successfully. Under Agent, I now select the option I want to use for the connection to MindSphere. In our example, we select the function blocks. I now have to enter a limit value here. This value represents the maximum number of MindSphere units I can use with this asset. Let's just enter the maximum value as a default. I now see some information I will need later in the TIA portal. OK. The first thing I want to show you now is the settings we'll need to configure for the CPU. I assign an IP address to my CPU. In this case, the IP address will be 10, 20, 100, 101. Now I can use a Scalance M to connect my controller to the Internet and to MindSphere. Here, too, an IP address must be assigned, and I must specify a router which the controller will use to get online. A DNS server must also be configured. We'll use the Google server in our example. Right, Stefan. Let's not forget about security, a hot topic right now. What exactly do we still need to do to ensure an easy and safe controller connection to MindSphere? Yes, of course, that is a very important topic. I'll show you now what needs to be done. The next step is to adjust the global security settings. In the Certificates Manager, I specify my two certificates for MindSphere. In our example, these have already been added. Once we have added the two certificates here, they still have to be assigned to the controller. For this, I go back to the hardware configuration of the controller. I navigate to Partner Certificates under Protection and Security. I click Add New and then Import to add the two certificates here. 
On my system, this has already been done. It is really important to remember the IDs of the two certificates. These IDs will later have to be added in the function block. Next, we open the FB42 function block. This is where I now enter the parameters from MindSphere. I need to enter the IAT and the tenant name under Communication, Configuration, Connection, and Asset. This information is provided in MindSphere. I copy the IAT here. and paste it into MindSphere. I do the same again with the tenant. Here I need to enter the certificate IDs as mentioned earlier. Let's now have a quick look at the actual function blocks. For the purposes of this demonstration, we have an additional function block saved here. This function block switches the others in sequence to ensure they will be processed in the correct order. I will also specify the desired sampling rate for our variables here and the number of samplings after which the data should be forwarded to MindSphere. Next, let's have a look at the MCFB Collect Data Model, which collects a data model and sends it to MindSphere. You can look at the data model in MCFB Data Model DB. This is where an array is created, in which you can configure your data model. In my example, we configured four data points. The next function block is MCFB Collect Data Value. It collects the values and writes them to a buffer. You will need to do your own configurations in the buffer. This function block will have to be assessed once per data point upload. The last function block is MCFB Communication. It establishes the connection to MindSphere and ensures safe data transfer to the cloud. Now that you know what all the function blocks are for, I can go ahead and load the project to the controller. Since we are working with certificates here, it is important to check the time of the controller. For this, I establish a connection to my controller. Under set time, I can see that the controller is set to a time in the past. I want to change the setting to the current time. I can now open the monitoring table. I start the entire process via the variable MCFB demo start demo. As you can see, the routine started up and has now completed one full cycle. I design my program to work in intervals. Okay, the controller is now connected to MindSphere. We've provided a comfort panel here to simulate values. You see four different controllers here. We can use these four controllers to simulate the various data points. For instance, I will randomly increase the values so that you can see a reaction in MindSphere. Stefan will now show you what the reaction looks like in concrete terms. Exactly. For this, let's go back to our MindSphere, to the home page. We select the asset we created earlier in Visual Analyzer. Here we can see the aspect motor, exactly as we created it earlier. We can track the changes here, 
while Philip continues to modify the values. Very nice. That's really easy to do. Yeah. And that's all there is to it. Connecting the TIA Portal Integrated Siemens S7-1500 controller to the Siemens MindSphere is very easy and effective and will allow you to utilize your data even more efficiently. Completely new areas of use become available, such as preventive maintenance or comparing your machines worldwide. Get started with your own trials today and take advantage of the endless possibilities that Siemens MindSphere has to offer. Siemens. Ingenuity for life.